you hear me? Yes, there we go. Awesome. It is a delight to have you guys with us today. Merry Christmas. And welcome to Real Hope. We are delighted that you chose to be with us today. Today's a very special day here at Real Hope. We are sharing, or actually our children are going to be sharing a special message with you today. And so we're excited that you chose to be with us on this rainy, cold day. But um, without further ado, we are going to, um, the very first time we've done this actually here, but it's so festive and fun. That's what the holidays are all about, right? Jesus and having fun and enjoying one another and so we love to showcase our children and our babies and all of our families here and so a part of that we're going to showcase our beautiful babies that we have been so blessed with and so if you will help me applaud when um, they're going to come and, and circus around not circus we're going to circle around and um, parade around in front of you and so um we're going to get started. All right. Well, first up, we have, this is Christmas morning with the Sanders. Yeah, and so we are so excited. We got a new addition this year. Today, we have Isaiah. Isaiah is leading the pack. And Isaiah is the son of Joshua and Madison Sanders. He is three years old. And he is enjoying his baby brother. He loves playing basketball with his dad every single day. He loves learning his shapes and colors and his ABCs. And what he wants for Christmas is a hockey net. We are so excited. And his sister, Anna... She is also the daughter of Joshua and Madison, and she's two now, right? Okay, yes. And she's two, and she's learning the new role as being a big sister, growing her singing skills. She's obsessing over everything Peppa Pig. If you know, if you have a toddler, you know about Peppa Pig. And she wants for Christmas baby dolls and everything that goes with it. And last but not least in the Sanders family is... Silas, the newest addition. He is, how many weeks now, Mama? Five weeks. And he's also belongs to Josh and Madison. Look at that. He is eating all day. He is also sleeping most of the night. And he's requiring lots of diaper changes. Yeah. So we are so excited that the guys are, are being with us today. Thank you, Sanders. Next is Miss Piper Denisha. Oh, what a joy, Miss Piper. She is the daughter of Gary and Danielle Denisha. She's one year old. Piper likes to play with her brother. She likes to practice walking between mommy and daddy and playing with all of her fun toys. She is so beautiful. What she wants for Christmas is she wants a baby doll. And most of all, she wants to walk all on her own. And that's a prayer that we have here at Real Hope because she's going to be walking soon. Yes. Can you give it up for Miss Piper? She is full of personality and fun and smiles. Oh, next up is Miss Jessie. Miss Jessie is two years old. And she is the daughter of Melissa, Melissa Way. She loves flashcards and Paw Patrol, but she really just likes anything. And for Christmas, she got to go see Santa. That was so fun, huh? She is full of personality, even though maybe not right now. She loves her mommy to very, very much. And we are excited to share Jesse with you today. Precious girl. Miss Melissa has many, many girls running around here that look like just like her, the mini me's. Next up is full of personality, Mr. Calvin Bauer. Calvin is the son of Sean and Susan Bauer. He is three years old. He's full of spunk, let me tell you. Um, the things that he enjoys is watching surprise egg videos and playing with his big brothers. What he wants for Christmas? 
You know what a typical three-year-old would want, a blue iPhone just like his brother. <laughs> Headphones and hatchimal, hatch animals. Give it up for Calvin. We are so excited to be able to share that with you. And um, they, you know, lots of those kids are hidden away in the nursery and sometimes next door. And you don't always get to see them all. And, uh, but we wanted to showcase them. We like to show off prizes and trophies. Now, they're not really trophies, but they belong to us. And, and they are sure valuable, let me tell you. So, um, without further ado, if Mr. Jonathan would come forward. This is Mr. Jonathan. He's our children's director, and he's going to tell you a little bit more about what's going to be happening today. Good morning. So today is the day for the kids to put on a Christmas play for you. Some of your parents are saying, finally, because we've been doing this since August. Sing same song over and over and over and over. They have worked very hard. I'm very proud of them, and I love each and every one of them. I can't explain how much fun this is. And if you're interested in helping next year, please join. Get with me. Yes. Um, today, the title of the play is called Christmas Shoe Play. And they have worked very hard, so I hope you enjoy. Christmas, my true love came to me, a partridge in a pear tree. Oh, Carl, that is just beautiful. Can't no one decorate a Christmas shoe tree like you, brother. Well, Mom always said I had the touch when it comes to decorating, but I'm thinking I'm needing a pair of turquoise converses to go right around here, though. I didn't know that, but I did know a bunch of new young people who conducted for middle school is coming by to take a tour of Drop off some shoe donations. Maybe brother be your peer there. Those turquoise colored ones in the bunch. Well, one can only hope. One can only hope. Um, peacock feathers. You think peacock feathers would really make it pop? Sounds good to me, but you're the expert, not me. Oh, have you seen Todd running around this morning? Yes, and running was exactly what he was doing. R running around here like a chicken with his head cut off, talking naughty to nothing. Oh, Carl, he can't help himself. I love it, though. He's always had the hold of a child when it comes to Christmas. <coughs> On the second day of Christmas, my true love sent to me two turtle peacocks. You old cow, look at here. We just had another big drop off a shoe. Twelve baskets full, just like the disciples said. Maybe we'll get a, a no shoes for 5,000 folks this year. And these will be the little ones we can add to next year. Maybe so, Todd. This is all of the first day of the season. If they keep coming in like this, we're going to be a shoe-in for the business to win the most award. 
to win the award for the most donations. Todd, you know that's not why we collect shoes for folks around Christmas. Whether we get 5,000 pairs or just one, it's all about making a difference in someone's life. Showing them love and care by taking care of one of their basic needs, having a good pair of shoes. Yeah, I know, I know. With the, <laughs> the Timberwolves coming and getting away, the big trophy and all, we want to win it as soon as anybody else. Now, Todd. All right, you all. It's kind of neat you mentioned the story from the Bible, though. You know, Jesus was preaching to them and realized they were getting powerful hungry. So he fed them. I, I just now thought of it, but that's kind of what we do with shoes every year. We give them to people, and we, then we tell, show the truth of them about Jesus and how much he loves them. That's exactly right, you know, I may have the word with the decorating and all, but you're just so really a font with your words. Carl, I'm going to run and get the rest of the basket for you. Todd, you knocked my tree over, and I'm going to knock you. Students, stay together now. Don't wander off. 
stay with the group. We'll be starting the tour shortly. Well, hello there. You must be Principal Poinsettia. I am. Welcome to Yule, Todd, and Carl's Christmas Shoe Tree Farm. I'm Yule. Over there's my brother Todd and my brother Carl. We're just so happy to have y'all visiting with us today. Oh, we are delighted to be here, Yule, and I just love the name of your place. What clever social media marketing for Christmas. I can't wait to check in here on Facebook. Well, you don't have to check in here. We ain't all fancy like that. But we do have a guest book, guest book you can sign. If you want it, you can put a picture of your face in it. Well, that's just fine with me. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I'd like to introduce you to the students I brought with me today. They're part of an extracurricular group at Douglas Fir Middle School called Secret Service. They try and come up with different service projects to do around the school. Sort of random acts of kindness, if you will. And the most beautiful part is they never tell anyone who does the work. It's all a secret on a down low, as the students might say. Well, we got a few service projects they can do around here, and I ain't keeping that a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Yule, you are such a stitch. As I said on the phone, I wanted to bring the group to out to see firsthand how a business like yours could truly impact its community with a project like your shoe tree. I think it ties in with our group's mission perfectly. Well, bless my prickle bitches. I tell you what, I'll go ahead and take all the guys on the tour. Now you're welcome to stay around as long as you like. Perfect. Thank you so much, Yul. Students, listen up. Todd, about to take this group of young guys on a tour. You got things under control? Sure thing. <laughs> Angel that Mary is not going to come to Matuity Grace's spend the night party because Ivy totally forgot to tell her about after movies last week. Douglas Fir Middle School. Yes, so we are. Where are they? Well, they just left to go. Oh, Christmas tree, Jill, we're lost. They just left us here all by ourselves. What are we going to do? Does your, I got to text Holly and tell her. Does your phone have a GPS? Shut up, Celeste. We're not out in the woods. We're at a Christmas tree farm, and I can totally scare a group that that cat in here. Yeah, no worries. My brother just took them to go on a tour of the farm. Carl of the Bells, thank goodness. Hey, how'd you know my name? Although people do call me Christmas Carl because I just love singing Christmas carols. And I kind of like the ring of Carl and the bells. Get it? I get it when I'm not even trying. So where are we again? Celeste, whatever space cadet, we're at Yule Todd and Carl's Christmas Shoe Tree Farm. And I'm Carl, and my brother Todd and you are my brothers. It's part of the Christmas party that we're doing for Secret Service. Shh, Jill, it's a secret. Hello, I may not know where you are, but I do know we're not supposed to tell anybody what we're doing. Silly goose. Can you please remind me why we're best friends? Jill, that totally hurt my feelings. Why don't you two girls work this out while you go catch up to your group? I don't want y'all to get in trouble or nothing. Let me holler at you. Yo, you got some stragglers here. I'm sending them your way. Thanks, Mr. Christmas Carl. Hey, you guys, where you been? Principal says he'll just get you going. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Suddenly, when Hope got back from the movie, she called Noel. Noel told her that Nativity Grace didn't know what she was talking about. I know, right? Decorate your trees with shoes. La 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 la. Guess what? Guess what? We just wait. Listen, that's a Christmas call. We just guess what? We just got a call from the TV station and Action News Twelve is coming out to do a story on the shoot you fall. So I need to get ready. Get ready for what? You don't get ready for anything. Well, if that person newscast the Sylvia Bell is coming out to interview me, I gotta put on the dog. When she gets alone with me, she might start singing on Christmas Carol herself. All I want for Christmas is a day with Todd. <laughs> How oh, mercy, boy. Well, while you're putting on the dog, why don't you turn on some Christmas tunes while you're at it? So it'll be all festive once she gets here. Sure thing.
There's a song in the air, there's a star in the sky, there's a mother's deep prayer, and a baby's low cry. In the star rains its fire, while the beautiful sing for the manger of Bethlehem, cradles the king. Well, hello there. Excuse me for a minute. Hello, sir. I'm Rudy Rains with Action News 12. We're here to do a human nature story about your Christmas tree. She's in. Hey. Hey, Rudy. But we actually, we don't do a shoe tree. Oh, what? <laughs> hey, my name is Yule Logan. And what we actually do here is a Christmas shoe tree drive. My brother Carl's in charge of this place. And he gets a little testy when people don't get it right. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. We're just so tickled pink, or should I say red and green, that y'all want to put us on TV. The pleasure is ours, Will. Let me introduce you to our correspondent, Sylvia Burns. Oh, I know who she is. We watch your new show every night. Sylvia, this is Mr. Yule Logan. Mr. Logan, I am overjoyed to make your acquaintance and overwhelmed to be able to bring the story of your Christmas shoe tree drive to you. Well, that's just great, Miss Bells. But we don't give away shoes and molasses. But to come and think of it, that's not actually a bad idea. Choose the molasses, but no one's ever done that before. <laughs> Heavens to Betsy, brother. What on earth, man? <laughs> this is what I call styling and profiling. Why did it look my best for a little wrist? Sylvia Bells. This is my brother Todd, I think. Todd, this is Mr. Rudy Rains and Miss Sylvia Bells. Well, lights, camera, action. Ready to roll them? We watch our show every night. So I've heard. Rudy, Lori and I are going to the land until you're ready to start playing our musical. Well, great. Yule, I need to get some information about this project, how long it's been going, and how many shoes you normally give away each year. Well, well, I, well, I was just about to tell the kids about that. Well, I can tell how it all got started. I don't like to brag, but it was sort of my idea. Oh, here we go again. Really, it's like this. All my life I've been a barefoot kind of guy. Never really cared about wearing shoes. And any time I get a pair, I always give them away. People are always so great to get them. So, 
And I always felt great giving them. So one day I said to myself, Todd, which is what I call myself, <laughs> what if I can get people to, people to give up their shoes to people that are less fortunate? It was like a million white light, million white light bulb went off in my head. Um, and when I told you and Carl about it, it was history. I actually wrote a little song about it myself. You will call and I perform here every year around this time. You you ready? Goodness knows. Carl. Carl, where you at? Bring the banjo. <laughs> Heavens to Betsy, brother. What on earth, man? Hey, I gotta look my best if I'm gonna be on TV. <laughs> Grace's mom said the spin the night party was going to be postponed until Abby got back from her vacation. Girls, you must try to keep up. You just missed the most wonderful performance by our hosts, Yule, Todd, and Carl. Oh, we're so sorry, Principal Vincetia. I'm trying to keep up. Take the halls, Jill. What are you trying to say? We can sing it again. Oh, no. That would be asking <laughs> way too much of you.
Okay, let's move it along. These feathers are itching me to death. Rudy, I was thinking me and Seal might ought to team up like calls today since I'm all dressed up. Hold it right there, Todd Loggins. If anybody's gonna be, if anybody's gonna co-host with Sylvia Bells, it's gonna be me. Now you know I'm the best looking thing in this family. Can you imagine how this face will look okay? <laughs> <laughs> Before we leave, we'll grab some individual interviews. But right now, we're better off with Sylvia handling this one alone. She might be a little intimidated by the enormous presence she does. Well, yeah. Yeah, you do got a point there. We are understood. Understood. Sylvia, let's open with some. With you introducing Yule Todd and Carol with some background info on the tree farm, then we'll get some shots with Yule with the kids. Okay, Rudy, how's my hair? Is it big enough? Blue hair, I think we'll look lots of the colors on my lips are In three, two, one, action. Hello, people. I'm Sylvia Bells going to Action News with Action News 12, keeping you up to date and in, and in the know about everything Christmas this season. Today's action is here at Yule Todd and Carl Loggins' Christmas tree farm. But wait, it's not your ordinary old tree farm. For the Loggins have incorporated the spirit of giving characteristic into this most wonderful time of year. Seeing it for myself today has left me utterly speechless. Uh. However, I'm expressing my emotions and spread the word about this lend a helping hand, or should I say shoe, to your fellow man mission. Yo, Loggins, tell us about your shoe tree farm. Well. Right after I tell everyone that this farm not only sells trees, they give away shoes to those in need. Hint, wait, no. They even decorate one of the shoes here with trees. Hence the shoe tree, as a glorious beacon representing the love and faith they share with others. Uh, yeah, I'd love to tell you about why we... And we are all ecstatic with anticipation to hear all about it, y'all. But before we do, our Action News 12 team has a, has a spectacular Christmas surprise for everyone. We went, like, I think it's a perfect fit for our shoe tree story. Thank you. 
you, everybody. Thanks for coming out to do this for us. Rudy, that monologue completely drained me. Uh, I need a few minutes in the Mandarin group. Gloria, follow. Sure, so take five. We'll show you what the kids have. All right, Rudy, that sounds good. You ready, you Just relax. Here we go. Three, two, one. The Christmas tree farm has been in our family for many, many years. And when Todd and Carl and I got old enough to start taking over, I began feeling the Lord speaking to me by us about using it for more than just selling trees. I started thinking about how we could use trees to help spread the story and of Jesus right here at our farm. You know, there are a lot of stories in the Bible that talk about feet and shoes. Now, I know that might sound kind of funny, but when you come to think of it, the Lord has a lot to say about it in his word. Can anyone tell me about another place in the Bible where it talks about feet and shoes? really sure you talk about though. That's okay. I think I can help with that. The verse goes right along with the one I shared. What's your name? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joey, I'm proud of you for being so bold and cheering that with us. The verse you mentioned is Ephesians 6.15, and it talks about getting ready to tell others about Jesus. To get ready, you got to put on your shoes. The shoes help us carry the good news. The shoes we hang up and all around the tree over there help us carry the good news to every person who comes here to get us here. They see that we care about them because we're giving them something they really need. We get to help them with a the basic need while they, they're here. We can tell them about Jesus. One of my favorite shoe stories in the Bible is when Moses is leading the children of Israel through the desert, and it says that their shoes never wore out. That has always amazed me. Yep, the Lord knew they needed those shoes to, to, keep, to keep in there. There weren't any stores in the sh desert for them to buy some, so he made their shoes last as long as they needed them. Every time that they look at their feet, they are reminded that the Lord was taking care of them. I like the story about Jesus washing the disciples' feet. I love that one too, Jill. What a beautiful story about love and humility. You gotta really humble yourself to wash someone's feet. It's a very special way to show someone how much you care about them. Any, and the thing is, the person who gets their feet washed filled feels like a humble as they, the person doing the washing. My dad went on a mission trip to Africa last year, and they took shoes to kids in an orphanage. He told me that when they gave them the shoes, him and his team washed the kids' feet before they put the socks and the shoes on them. That is amazing. Thank you for telling us about that, Jill. It's just incredible how the Lord can use anything, even a pair of shoes, to show his great love. At Christmas time, we talk about the shepherd and the wise men all going to see baby Jesus. They were the first ones to see him and realize who he was. So I'm thinking they were the... They would have been the first beautiful feet to share the good news. The good news that Jesus loves us. He showed us by coming to earth, being born in an old stable, traveling all over the place to tell folks about the love of God and them showing to that, to that cross for us so that we could have eternal life. I just feel like the most important thing I can do in my life, in my work, is everything is to let my feet do what God made them to do. Walk and tell everybody about Jesus and his love. What? Did you put the dumb phone? I need to talk. Angels in the night, skies so shepherds. Go and find 
Jesus always knew what he would have to do for us to have eternal life. Though he never sinned, he proved his love for us when he picked up that rocket cross. He knew exactly how far and how hard his journey would be, yet he knew this was his destiny. So walk of love for Jesus. It's what he came here for. It was a walk of love only God's son could make to save the world. No matter what it cost, he knew that every step. Was worth it all on that walk of love. So God so loved the world, He sent His only Son, so that whoever believes in Him shall not. You kids are ready to take a little break and go to the snack bar. Todd, why don't you take the group? Todd, Carl, why don't you take this group of youngers and to, to the snack bar? Sure thing. I could have a little something, something myself. Come on. <laughs> that was so great, Joel. That was so great, Joel. How's that? Thanks, Rudy. I really appreciate you saying that. You know, Jesus loves you. It's no accident that you were here today. I was just thinking the same thing. You know, if we get a few minutes, we can go take a walk. I like that. Hey guys, Joel's gonna, Joel's gonna show me around the farm. We'll be back.
Yeah, Andy Edward and her, her mom told him to be Grace's mom that the host for the night party was supposed to be a surprise birthday party for me. Up on the house top. Isn't that awesome? You do all this time, didn't you? So, so anyway, now you can help me plan my surprise birthday party. Um, okay. Ooh, I wonder where you're going off to. No telling. Well, this has just been the most delightful day. Thank you all so much, but we must be getting back to school. Please tell your brother how much we appreciate the time he took with the children today. Oh, with the ones that are on here, it's been a joy to spend the day with y'all today. Why don't we do this again next year? That would be wonderful. Students! Rudy has my hair right now. Uh, it's only gonna stay this big for about five more minutes, so let's get going. Okay, Sylvia. Before before we leave, we'll send with a segment of everybody saying Merry Christmas and waving. All right, everyone gather around Sylvia. And so we found ourselves saying so long to Yule Todd and Carl, Yule Todd and Carl and their shoe tree for now. But please feel, but please come by and visit them anytime during the Christmas season. You're sure to be charmed by, you're sure you're sure to be overwhelmed by the charm and charisma of the Loggins family. Shoe donations begin today and will continue throughout the holidays. So please feel free to. Stop by to donate, to drop off or pick up shoes during the hours listed across the screen. I, for one, have felt laced with love and my soul forever touched by my experience here today. So I've decided to donate my shoes as well. Truly, you can't stop these shoes from sharing the good news. For Action News 12, I am Sylvia Bells. And Merry Christmas! And cut. Great job, everybody. That's the wrap. Good job. Good job. Awesome job. What hope. What hope. What hope. Let me say something to you guys before I say something to them. You've been here for a while this morning, and I know that we have extended your attention span, but if you'll give Pastor Jeremy just about a few minutes these adults out here still have about two minutes more of an attention span than you do. So I'm going to talk to them for a moment, and then I'm going to give you a gift at the end. Is that okay? If, you, if you'll listen to me. Thank you so much. Certainly this morning we have celebrated the hope of Jesus Christ. And as you have heard in a unique, creative way, we are by order of what the Bible says, that we should be ready to share the gospel of Jesus. That the Bible says to shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So one version says to be fitted, our feet to be fitted for the readiness of sharing the gospel of peace. The Bible also says that we should always be prepared to give an answer to those who ask about the hope that we have. And our hope is in Christ Jesus. 
And I trust that this Christmas season that you have that same hope. I trust that in your heart and in your life, you can say that Jesus Christ is your hope and he is your personal Savior. And today, if you don't know him as your personal Savior, I'm just going to tell you gently, as the Bible says, to do it with gentleness, you have no hope. Your only hope is found in knowing Jesus Christ and having him in your life in a personal relationship with you. It can't be done through your grandparents. It can't be done through your parents. It can't be done through your ancestors who used to have a relationship with Jesus. It has to be done through you in a personal level. Jesus loved you enough that he did create this story for us that we depicted today in a very unique way that he came, that he was born, that he was man, Emmanuel with us, God with us. And then he came for one purpose, one purpose, to give his life away as a ransom for all mankind. And today we celebrate that in such a unique way, but it's so true that it is our responsibility to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. Because without Jesus, this world has no hope. Those who don't know Jesus don't know hope. And it is our responsibility as a church to share the gospel of Jesus with other people. Now this morning, I'm going to take up an offering, but I want to tell you about the offering that we're going to take up today. Today, your giving and your offering is going to go to help our church share the hope and the gospel of Jesus Christ with the world around us. Every week you come in and every week you give. Every week you, you financially are, are faithfully committed to this church. And it's our job and, and our hope that we can share Jesus in such a way that others find him. I shared this past Friday night with our volunteer staff that in 2018, it is my desire to see people come to know Jesus Christ through Real Hope Church. And you're giving everything that you give financially to this church helps us to do that and to share Jesus to the world around us. In 2017, we've seen people come to Christ because of the work of this church. We've seen teenagers come to know Jesus Christ because of the work that's going on in our youth program. We've seen kids and students of this age come to know God better because of the work that's been going on in our children's program. Our church is healthy. Our church is doing the work of Jesus Christ. And we want to continue that in a greater fashion in 2018. Last week, I asked you to give in an expansion offering, believing that what you gave would be a seed in your own personal life that God would answer the prayer that you put forth. And I want to say thank you for giving because you did give. And I do believe that God is going to answer your faithfulness and your commitment. Even this past week, I've received text messages and phone calls of how God is already working in the lives of people who faithfully sowed a seed into this ministry to see what God would do. And I want to give you an opportunity this morning as our ushers are preparing to come and to give. And I want you to give this morning. And I want you to give faithfully. I want you to give what God puts on your heart, but... This type of thing doesn't happen without the faithful financial contributions of our people. And we are grateful for that. But I'm asking you today one more time to give to help us to continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I have a special request. This may be a little odd. But I'd like to hear that song, Joy to the World, again as we give. Can you guys do that for me? You guys want to hear that one more time? I know they want to hear it. As much of you as we can. Could you stand as we give in this offering this morning? I'm going to pray. And at the end of my prayer, I want us to start that song. And I want us to sing it together. As a matter of fact, if you're able to stand, will you just stand this morning? And let's, as we give, let's celebrate the Lord in this rendition of joy to the Lord. Father, we thank you for your gift today to us, your son Jesus. And we ask you, God, to bless this offering as we give it today for you. And we ask you, God to honor those who are giving today, to bless them, Father, for their contribution, to multiply it back to them as you have promised in your word to do. 
And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's sing this morning. You can be seated for just one more moment. Now i got to give our thank yous to those who did a fabulous job of helping you guys. Um, that You didn't need a whole lot of help, though, because you're cute, adorable, and absolutely amazing. Come on, give them one more hand. They deserve it. Such bravery. Such bravery. I got to, to bring Jeremiah here today, and I felt so honored to be able to escort the one of the stars of the show here in my own personal car. I'm hoping he'll give me an autograph before this is over. Maybe we can get a selfie together. Let me say to you, if first of all, if you're a guest today, we just welcome you. Today is obviously a little different than our normal Sunday, uh, but it's a very special day for us. In a few moments, when we finish in this area, we're going to go next door and we're going to have a meal. If you came today and you didn't plan to eat with us, please don't worry about that. Just come next door and eat. There's plenty of food, and we want everybody, whether you're a first-time guest or whether you're here as a patron and been here for years, we want everybody in this room to go next door and eat. I promise there's plenty of food over there. It's really good. 
Uh, but we want to also tell you, if you don't have a church home, uh, Real Hope is always open, and we're always welcoming new people, and we are just a family that believes these three things, that real love, real faith, make a real difference in your life. And we, we continue to strive to do that. We're not perfect, but we're heading in the right direction that God has us going, and we're believing for great things in 2018. And once you come be a part of it, next weekend we are having service Christmas Eve. It's going to be a very special time for you and your family to come. We're going to be doing communion, and I want to personally invite you. Be here. It's going to be a very special day. We're also having service on New Year's Eve, um, so be here. Be a part of that. Now, uh, let me say a couple of things. First of all, thank you to our praise team who helped out with our children's Christmas musical. You guys are phenomenal. We appreciate you. To the bluegrass band that was over here, they're taking bookings. Uh, see uh, Terry Cook or Connor Donald, and they'll, they'll be glad to go to your show and your event. Um, I said this Friday night to our kids ministry volunteers, and not just for this program, but for 2017 altogether, uh, we have many people, many adults. Um, we don't have enough. We're 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 not we're understaffed, as many would say. And so our adults who and our teens who are working with our kids program, they work faithfully. They're very committed. Uh, they're here week in, week out. Uh, they do their normal life, and then they come here to invest in the lives of these young people. And I am so grateful for the job that they have done. So many times this year, you may be, as a children's volunteer, you may feel like you have not made a difference. But I promise you, if you have spent a moment with these kids and you have shared the gospel of Jesus and you have encouraged them and you've just been there to help support them, you have made a difference and you planted a seed in their life that will grow and God will develop that. And he made a promise that he would do that. So I want to thank you if you work in our kids' department um, those of you who work, our, some of our students were helping over here as the wise men. They had to work really hard, these kids did, to be wise. But they gained wisdom in a short amount of time. So we thank you for that. I want to say to uh, Christy, thank you so much. Uh, you do a great job every year of helping conduct the choir and kind of bring things together. And we are so grateful for what you're doing and uh, so appreciative of it. And it, it really pays off. And you give yourself in a lot of different areas around here, but at Christmas time, uh, you dedicate yourself to the kids, and we thank you and we appreciate you for what you have done. And you guys, come on up here. Uh, Sister Pastor over here is waving you up here to stand with me, because that's important. Come on, give Christy a hand. She's she does really good. This is the time of the year that the Lord really helps her with her patience and gives her a double dose. And we're thankful for that. We love you and we appreciate you from our church family. Um, let me get my notes out because if I don't get my notes out, I'll forget something. Um, yeah. Well, about 30 seconds ago, I gave Jonathan an opportunity. Um, I told him he had 30 more seconds to change his career path. This past two years, uh, Jonathan, I've been here August of 15. I think August was two years. Jonathan was here doing our kids' ministry, and uh, he was really ambitious and excited. And when we got here, we just automatically said, you just keep doing what you're doing and keep serving the kids and keep serving the Lord. And for the last, I, since I've been here two and a half years, how long have you been working over there? Three years total. Uh, Jonathan Powell has dedicated his life uh, outside of his school, his work, his social life. He has dedicated his time to the kids at Real Hope. He has just given countless hours of preparation and uh, working, and I'm so grateful for all that Jonathan has done. He's done a fabulous job with our kids. Um, our kids have fallen in love with him, and he has just been a blessing to us. And I'm very thankful and very grateful for his friendship, and I'm thankful for his leadership in our kids' department. I have, um, for uh, a couple 
weeks ago, a few weeks back, Jonathan did come to me, and he said that God is changing some career path in him as far as his college is concerned, and he's having to make some uh, tough choices to, to go a little more distance than what he's doing now. And so he feels like at this season of his life, he needs to focus a little more on his school and what he's doing. And um, so today, I want to say thank you to Jonathan. Jonathan will be stepping back a little bit uh, in January and uh, doing kind of taking on a different role. But I want to say thank you to Jonathan uh, for all that you've done and the work that you've done for our kids. We just honor you today. We honor you today. We have just a small token of appreciation for all that you've done. Come on, you can stand up. He's worthy of that. He's done a good job. I love you. And I appreciate you. When you guys were over here enjoying the move of the Spirit and the Word of the Lord, Jonathan was over there delivering the Word of the Lord to our kids, and so we're grateful for him. Uh, we do have a plan for January. Uh, you can remain standing because we're going to dismiss, and then we're going to give these kids the prizes as we dismiss. Uh, we do have a plan for January. Uh, Pastor Donna is going to be stepping in for a little season and helping out in our kids' ministry next door, and then... Uh, I want to tell you, though, it's a great time for you. If you would like to volunteer and give of your time, uh, we are in need of some help and some volunteers, and uh, these kids need your help. They need your assistance, and uh, we would appreciate if you have some time and you feel the heart and the tug to come help with our kids on Wednesday night, on Sunday mornings. We have a full kids program both, both times that we have services here. And uh, so we invite you to come be a part of that. You come see me, and we'll talk about uh, the future of that and your involvement. So I'm going to say grace over our food. Yes. That is, uh, we, well, let me say, Pastor Donna has helped me remember something. And Christy, yes. If you will turn around and look back at the back of the room really quick, there's a couple of guys back there that this production would not be possible without and that's yeah. Ashley Ward and Josh Sanders our media guys we're so grateful for you guys they are they've been here the whole time every practice we're so grateful for what they're doing but I'm going to ask God to bless us and bless our food and then uh, we're going to give the kids a gift as we exit but let me give you the plan when we exit if you'll just go out these doors over here I don't know if it's still raining or not but um, just hit the this side of the fellowship hall just go right in you don't have to wait for any special guest if you're a if you're a senior citizen or if you're a first-time guest with us we invite you to get at the front of the line just make your way through if somebody says what you doing say I'm the first I'm a VIP today I, the pastor said I get to eat first so you go to the front of the line with my permission, okay? Anything else, Miss Christie? Okay, yeah, stay on stage for pictures and gifts. So let's bless the food. Father, we thank you for this day and all of your blessings, God. Lord, we pray that you bless these people as they leave this place. And God, may they return back here with us this Wednesday and next Sunday to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ one more time. Father, we ask you to bless the food that is we're eating today we ask you bless those that have prepared it father for those in this room today god that that just need to be closer to you i pray that you draw them closer i pray that you give them that tug in their heart lord and i pray they surrender everything they have